Hello everyone, my name is Nuvala and welcome to a new video. Today we're building the Toolsmith House. This is one of the 14 unique buildings from the Trading Village that I showcased earlier. If you haven't seen that video, I highly suggest doing so. I'll leave a link to it at the end of the video. As mentioned, today is time for the Toolsmith. It also includes an automatic iron farm and I will show you how it works on both Java and Bedrock Edition. So without further ado, let's start building. Let's go! Starting the iron farm, dig down 8 blocks straight down from this location. At least 8 blocks. Because you will need the whole farm to be 8 blocks underground to make sure that no iron golems spawn on the surface. I dig down 24 blocks because I don't like the sounds coming from this farm. Which is a bit more than you need to. But at least I won't have the sounds coming from this farm. Once you're down here, place down a torch and dig two blocks in any direction. At the spot where we are now, dig out nine blocks to the left and to the right, making this a room of 19 blocks long, including the block where you started from in the middle. Dig out four blocks in front of you as well and three blocks high, making this a room of 19 by four by three blocks. In Bedrock Edition, you want to dig out 11 blocks in front of you instead of 4 because you will need a lot more villagers than you do in Java Edition. But I'll come back to that at a later point in the video. Once you've dug out the room, we are going to create a room exactly like this straight beneath this room. So you want to dig out the 3 blocks in the middle of the farm, dig down 4 blocks. This enables you to create the exact same room straight underneath this room with a three block wide gap in the middle. Now when you're digging out these rooms, it's possible that you find a cave system nearby. If so, you want to make sure that in an eight by eight by eight block radius, all blocks are spawn proofed because otherwise iron golems might spawn next to the villagers in these caves instead of straight above them in the room where they will be killed. When an iron golem is roaming outside of the farm, the villagers will feel safe and they won't spawn new ones, which breaks the farm. If you're sure that you've spawn proof the caves nearby, you can finish the room and if you haven't done so already, create a way for you to get in and out of the farm using ladders for example. I'm using the soon to be bubble column shaft for this, but you can also create a new way in and out of the farm. Okay, so get down into the farm again and make your way down into the lower room. In this room, you want to place down three beds on the side right here and surround it with slabs. Also place a row of slabs on the top of the second block right here. Make sure that the room is lit up and place a water bucket in the corner right here in which we will drop down the villagers, making sure that they don't take any damage when we do drop them. Place down four rows of leaves in front of this room. One, two, three, four. And then dig three blocks down right here. Place down two soul sand and two water buckets on top of it. This is the holding cell for the zombie we are going to add. Surround it with leaves as well. That's one side done. Now you want to repeat this on the other side as well. And you want to make sure that the entire floor is filled with leaves. This makes sure that iron golems won't spawn on these blocks. Now comes the tricky part, because you want to create four holes from the surface straight down to these holding cells. We need three villagers on each side of the farm, so you want to dig straight up or down above the water source that we created earlier. And you want to dig down above the holding cells for the zombies as well. First you want to bring in your villagers, three on each side. Now I'm in creative, so I can just use spawn eggs, but when in survival, you can get them in using minecarts. For the zombies, you want to wait until nighttime, get those in a minecart as well, give them a name tag, which is important because otherwise they will despawn, and drop them down to shoot above the holding cells for the zombies. 
It's important that you get them out of the minecarts, otherwise the villagers won't be able to see them. So get down there and break them out of the minecarts. The spawning mechanics for iron golems are so that a villager needs to sleep, get scared by a zombie, wake up and then create an iron golem. So this farm will only start working after the villagers have slept once. Because we have two sides, this means that we can have two iron golems every 30 seconds in the most ideal case. We have one problem though, because we haven't finished the farm on top. So if you do this in this order, it might spawn an iron golem, which is still able to get down here and kill these zombies, as you can see right here. You don't want this, because as soon as they enter the farm, it's going to get operational, and it's not done yet. So you can get the villagers in here, and they are now sound asleep. And before we are going to add the zombies, we are going to create the system to bring the iron from down here up towards the surface. Place down a dispenser facing towards the bubble column on this spot. Dig away a few blocks beside it and place an observer facing towards the dispenser right here. Now we want to place another observer facing into the other one next to the dispenser. This will continuously trigger the dispenser because the observers facing into each other will continuously produce a redstone pulse. This will make quite a bit of noise so right now I don't want this observer right here. I will place this later on. Replace the floor in front of the dispenser by a soul sand block. The collection system is created by placing down two hoppers on top of the dispenser like this and then create a platform out of hoppers all facing into each other at this height. We will direct all of the spawning iron golems on to this hopper platform and kill them using lava. They will then drop all of their iron and poppies inside of these hoppers. To hold the lava place down warped or crimson fence gates. They need to be nether wood type because otherwise they will burn. Across the platform like this, at this height, then place down another row down here in the middle and another row in front like this. Open up all of these fence gates. And finally, add a lava source right here. After you've added the lava, make sure that the room is closed off, except for these chutes where we need to drop down the zombies. And now that the iron golems are unable to get down towards the zombies, you can add the zombies Make sure that you give them a name tag and as soon as these zombies are down here, iron golems will spawn on top. I can hear one already. It's stuck in the wall somehow, but that's no problem. Fill in the blocks on top of the zombies as well. And you should now have two closed off rooms. The one below and the one right here. Now to make sure that the iron golems are transported towards the lava, place down water buckets at the ends of the rooms, just like this. And now the spawning and killing room is done. So get yourself out of this room, move down, place down that second observer again if you haven't done so already. And now the farm is pretty much operational. The only thing left to do now is to transport the iron from down here towards the surface. For this we are going to create a bubble elevator. Let me show you a way how to do this in survival. Use a potion of water breathing. Place down a water bucket at the top right here. And then break all of the ladders all the way down to the bottom. Now please use an axe for this instead of your hands because it will take quite a long time otherwise. Once you're down here, place down kelp from the soul sample all the way to the surface. If you're unable to place down kelp, you want to temporarily replace the soul sand block by just a dirt block for example. 
create the column all the way to the top break down the kelp down below and now you have a water column if you did replace the soul sand block don't forget to place it back because once you do a bubble elevator is created and you should be yeeted onto the surface straight away and that's it your iron and poppies are now transported from down there all the way to the top right here now all we need is a collection system but before that let me quickly show you the bedrock farm because in bedrock you will need 10 villagers on each side which all have a bed and all have a workstation nearby what you want to do is dig down another block beneath the beds and place them here with a glass block on top so the bed is nearby but they won't be able to sleep then Replace the top slab that you placed in front of the beds for a fletching table. And you don't need the zombies in the middle. You can just fill in the entire floor using leaves. Do this on both sides and the farm should now be operational as well. Now in bedrock, villagers behave a little bit erratically. So at times it won't work, but eventually the villagers will relink to the correct workstations and correct beds. And if they do, they will spawn iron golems. And there is a very slim chance that the bubble elevator doesn't work in this way. The game crashed once in my case. I think due to the bubble elevator. So you might want to use a different redstone system to trigger the dispenser down below. Something that is a little bit slower. Now onto the collection system. Okay, so onto the collection system. For the collection system, we are going to start with two pillars of three stone bricks high on these locations and fill in the wall in between using regular stone. Build up one level higher towards the middle. So four blocks next to the pillars, and five blocks in the middle. After that, you want to delete these two blocks in the floor right here and place down a double chest. Behind it, next to the water column, place down a hopper facing into the double chest. On the other side of the water column, place down a stair like this and surround it with blocks. Place an upside down stair over the double chest to make sure that you can open it. And then once you've surrounded this, you can place down a water bucket in the stair. Now all of the items that come up will flow in front of this stair and get pushed towards the hopper. To make sure that nothing yeets out of this water column, we're going to place a block over the water column to make sure that items travel over the hopper and are transported into the double chest. There we go. Now all we need to do is close off this area. I like to be able to see inside of this chamber just to make sure that everything works correctly. You can surround the entire system with stone. In the end, it should look like this. We'll put a roof over this later on. Moving on to the front side of the build, place down two pillars of seven blocks high made out of stone bricks. In front of these pillars, place down another stone brick and a stone brick stair on top to make it look a little bit sturdier. In between these stone brick pillars, we're going to create a wall out of natural stone, pretty much the same way as we did on the side, just a bit higher. Create a doorway and a window and make sure that there are three blocks in between the door and the bottom side of the window. On the back side you basically want to repeat this but we're not going to put in a door. We're going to put in another window at the bottom like this. In the end the back side will look like this. On the side of the building where we are going to create a market stall later on, we're going to create a doorway right here and a window to the left. Build up the wall until you are one block lower than the stone brick pillars. On the other side, connect the collection system to the main building with a two block high wall. You can then fill in the rest of the wall using natural stone, also until it's one block lower than the stone brick pillars. Yep, 
you want to make sure that from inside the build you are able to enter the room with the collection system. Next up we're going to work on the roof. Place down cobblestone walls on each of these locations and then fill in the roof using deep slate brick stairs and deep slate brick slabs on top. To finish it off, place down sprue slabs right here with two sprue strap doors in between. Now you basically want to repeat this for the main building as well. So place down two rows of deep slate brick stairs and place deep slate brick slabs on top. Don't forget the cobblestone walls on the edges of the roof. And of course the spruce slabs and spruce trapdoors on these locations. We are going to make a small chimney by deleting four of the deep slate brick stairs at the side right here. Then place some brick blocks right here with two campfires on top, two spruce trap doors next to it, two brick walls on top. Then place the deep slate brick stairs back in this way so that it wraps around the campfires pretty much. For the doorway, place down a spruce fence gate and a spruce trap door right here. In this way, villagers are unable to escape the building. Place down an upside down stone brick stair right here with a leaf on top and surround that with spruce signs. Place down two spruce fences right here. A spruce fence gate, open it up. A campfire on top, which we can extinguish. And place two spruce trap doors right here and there's your window that's pretty much the front side you can create a window in pretty much the same way at the side of the market stall as well and at the back we are going to create two windows like this Now because of the campfire you won't be able to place an upside down stair here. So we'll just have a hovering leaf surrounded with spruce signs just like this. After that you can create pretty much the same window as on the front side. Back to the front side where we are going to light up the place using some iron trap doors with spruce fences underneath and a lantern hanging from these spruce fences. Do this at the back as well. For the market stall, place down two stripped spruce wood on the edges right here and connect these using upside down spruce stairs. You can then place down two spruce fences at the back right here. Place down gray and white wool overhead just like this to make sure that the villagers cannot escape place down spruce slabs over here and you can then alternate gray and white banners at the side of the market stall like this don't forget to light it up using a lantern and we are going to place a door inside with an upside down stone brick stair. Now you can decorate the market stall any way you like. I always like to put some flowers around and put item frames up showcasing the wares that I can buy at the toolsmith. For the interior, I've built a fireplace by placing down some brick stairs 
in this order with a campfire in between. Using brick slabs I built all the way up towards the chimney at the top. I've built a platform where I've created some extra storage for excess iron because you will get a lot. Place down some grey carpet to give it a more homely feeling. Place down a plant or two. And of course, make sure that you put down a workstation for your villager. I've placed down two smithing tables because I've got two toolsmiths inside. I've placed down a couple of beds in the corner right here. As you can see I've used some different deep slate blocks in the floor as well. The interior is completely optional, you can make this look any way you like. This is just an example of how you could do it. Some of the final details for the build are to replace some of the natural stone with cobblestone. And you can also use some andesite if you have it laying around. Surround the build using leaves and put it on the roof as well to give it a bit more of an overgrown feeling. And as I do in most of my videos, create a pathway towards your build and surround it with coarse dirt, stone pebbles in the form of stone buttons and grass to really make the building blend into the surrounding area. You can also plant some trees around. And after that, you're pretty much done. So that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, that it was easy enough to follow. If so, leave a like, leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and stick around. Consider subscribing. Come join us in the Discord where you can showcase your own builds or get inspired by others. And if you become a YouTube member, you get access to all of my world downloads of all of my builds. You can even buy me a coffee nowadays by using the link in the description as well. So I'll leave you with that and have a great day. See you next time. Cheers.